Uh, the trust fund insolvency dates appear to have moved within the budget window, as we like to say. Um, now, you guys actually project the old age survivors insurance trust fund separately from the disability trust fund. And the, the OESI fund is exhausted in 2032. And if you look at the size of the deficit in 2033 relative to the size of the remaining DI trust fund, if you add them together and create what sort of is the hypothetical combined trust fund, it would appear that, that on a combined basis, both trust funds would be exhausted in 2033. So which is the, the 10th year of, of this 10 year budget window. So, you know, essentially you have Social Security and, and Medicare Part A going insolvent in the 10 year budget window, which is not, to my knowledge, is not, not happened. Uh, you, you know, you, you go back 30 years and we were projecting that somewhere in the early 2030s, this would happen. And it seemed like such a long time away, you know, and now here we are and it's just 10 years away. I mean, it, it, do you see any significance in this sort of now becoming part of the debate by being in the budget window or, or does it really not change the dynamic from your perspective? Uh, it seems like an important thing that the social security trust fund is exhausted in the budget window. Um, so let me focus on Social Security first and then Medicare uh, second. Um, you know, under current law, benefits will be reduced by over 20% once the trust fund is, ex is exhausted. And that means doing nothing doesn't save Social Security. Doing nothing leads to reductions in benefits from what are now promised, but not payable. Um, and, and We've always known that this was coming, that the trust fund exhaustion date was looming, but now it's within the budget window. So it's not off into the, the future. Um, it, it moved forward because of the effects of high inflation. And so high inflation resulted in a high cost of living adjustment. Again, that, that's helpful for beneficiaries, but it's a result of high inflation that was the opposite of helpful for bene beneficiaries. Um, Medicare is, is a challenging one, and the Medicare exhaustion date actually moved back uh, a little bit in some sense also reflecting high inflation, but in, in a different way, right? High inflation meant that nominal wage growth was strong, and so the contributions coming into Medicare rose, as they did with Social Security, but in Social Security, the COLA outpaced the growth in contributions, whereas in Medicare, we had strong growth of contributions, and healthcare spending rose, but not as sharply. And so and there are some other things as well that, that essentially push back the Medicare date to the end of the, uh, of the window. Um, and Medicare is just a, it's a complex area because you know, there's so many different things happening um, within the healthcare system. Whereas social security, right? There's revenues and there's benefits, there's spending, right? There's, I mean, GDP growth and productivity affects affects those things, but there's relatively fewer policy levers um, with social, social security as compared to with Medicare. Yeah. So do you, do you think, I mean, I, I understand the CBO baseline. Mm -hmm. It assumes that benefits will be paid throughout the 10-year the window. In other words, you know, you mentioned there's this 20% reduction because if the trust fund is exhausted, mm -hmm. social security can't pay scheduled benefits on time. Mm -hmm. But the baseline assumes that benefits will continue to be paid. I mean, do, do you think there's any utility? I mean, obviously, CBO is following the law and scoring conventions and you know mm -hmm. baseline practices showing the result they do, which is benefits are paid, and that you know that, that, that's that's always been in the baseline. But I guess the question is, would it be helpful to reinforce to members of Congress that you know, even though we show benefits are being paid, you know, here's you know, you, you guys used to do these like alternative scenarios or alternative mm -hmm. assumptions. And I mean, would it be helpful to show, you know, okay, here's the baseline and benefits get paid and we borrow the money, even though the trust fund is, is exhausted, but here's the alternative way. And that is the trust fund is exhausted and benefits are cut across the board. Mm -hmm. But somehow, you know, members seem reluctant to, 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 to dip their toes into the water of social security reform. And as you say, doing nothing really isn't an option because that's going to lead to, to, to benefit cuts, but the baseline doesn't show those benefit cuts. And so there, there perhaps there's some other way to convey that information. Is there, have you guys thought about what, what alternative scenario could be presented? 
Uh, no, it's a, it's a good question. Um, we will do those later in the summer when we do, well, so we have two, two reports coming. This. Next is um, we'll analyze the president's budget. My understanding is that it's set to be released in early March. Um, we get data from OMB on the actual spending of last year. We get the president's proposals. We apply our economics to the, what the president has sent us and provide a report on that. And then we update the budget outlook and that, that typically is adopted by the budget committees as the scoring baseline. That's up to them, of course. And then later in the summer, we'll do the long-term budget outlook. And then um, as part of that, we would provide these alternate scenarios. What we've done in the past is stronger or weaker economic growth and then higher and lower interest rates. I think given the uncertainties in the economy, we probably need to do more dimensions of these um, different scenarios, but that's something we need to think about between now and the summer. Is it just as a uh, policy wise, are we drifting towards general revenue financing of, of these programs? I mean, if they don't raise revenue to cover the benefits or cut other spend, make some changes within the program with uh, say, we're talking about social security, the default mechanism uh, is general revenue finance. <laughs> and, uh, because nobody really thinks that we're going to get it. I mean, 20% benefit cut that you mentioned is current law, but uh, if if we hadn't phased in any changes then and they didn't want to have that take effect, you'd have to have some sort of uh, legislation transferring general revenues to Social Security, wouldn't you? Uh, that's right. And it would take, as you said, when, when I said that's right, it's because it would take legislation, as you said, um, to change the statutory right. authority for full promised benefits to be paid. Um, and, and, you know, what a future Congress will do, I, you know, I, I can't say. Um, you know, acting sooner makes things easier because acting sooner means that there's some generations who will shoulder their share of the burden of the adjustment, you know, whether the adjustment is higher taxes or lower benefits, you know, higher taxes than under current law or lower benefits that are now promised but not payable, right? So that's, that's I'm not using the word cut because, right, we're, we'd be cutting benefits, but they're not payable. Right. So what does that, you know, what does that mean? You're cutting something that's not payable. Um, so, but it's higher, ta higher taxes than under current law or lower benefits than promised. Doing that later means that there's some generations that don't shoulder their share of that burden. And of course, within a, given generation, that burden can be distributed in a way that policymakers want. And the policy proposals that we've analyzed in the past generally have a distributional inflection that lo lower income workers generally do not see those benefit reductions. In fact, many of them um, have higher benefits at the bottom and then lower benefits or higher, higher taxes at the top. And, and we did one of those sorts of policies in our December 2020, I'm sorry, December 2022 publication on budget options 